Good everyone. If you can settle in, we'll get started with the post-lunch session in a couple of minutes. Thank you. Okay, thank you ladies and gentlemen. The first presentation post lunch is going to be structured a little differently. This is the team from Tata Consultancy Services. The team is called Mountain Trekkers and they're represented by Animesh Devarshi, Samya Bhattacharya and Saptarishi Sarkar. Uh, because of the fact that we're live uh, streaming this on YouTube and Facebook, we have moved the presentation to inside that conference room. The presenters aren't here. We're actually um, doing this remotely and virtually. They're in uh, Hyderabad and in Kolkata. So what we will see is oh, there. I am. What we will see is the the YouTube link. There's likely to be a 30 to 40 second delay, but uh, we'll get started. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, hi, we can hear you loud and clear. Thank you very much. So, very good afternoon to all. I am Animesh, joined by Satyarishi Sharkar and Somna Patacharya, and we are here to present our analysis of the National Achievement Survey data. We will take you through the process we followed and provide some valuable insights from the data sets in the form of live demo. The app is developed using Shiny and is hosted on Amazon AWS platform. To act for the suggested direction, the primary ask was to identify the impact of various parameters on marks, such as distance, parents' education, and sibling presence. So if you see the desktop, the whole application is divided into five tabs, overview, impact of distance, impact of parents' education, impact of sibling, and a predictive model for feature selection. The first tab is the overview tab, which will explain the data. So we have tried to analyze the data, and with the, the first chance of the missing data, so almost all of variables, all of all of the attributes like social, science, reading, and math, 50 percent of the data we are missing. So this first one is the help of the left chance, and we have tried to show the distribution of marks for each of the subjects based on the filter available. So currently it is now selected as math, so we did the distribution of marks for math, and the chart is. Right skew, so the measure of central tendency we have taken is median. If we take, if we take another example, reading. Reading. So it is a bi model, positively skewed up, which is again central of tendency as median. So for all of these attributes, we have we try to distribute the median mark uh, for different states because in a, in a country like India, it is important to distribute the data on a state. So the below chart shows that uh, divide the three parts. The blue chart is the top four state, and the pink part is the three bottom four state based on the median mark. So here we have taken example of math. So the Kerala. We have taken the example of reading. So, the Kerala, Gaman, India, Maharashtra, and West Bengal are top four states which perform uh, good median marks in reading. And Andhra Pradesh, Meghalaya, Pondicherry, Jammu, and Kashmir are uh, not good in uh, providing good marks in reading. 
but if we change the base code to say math, the chart will change automatically. So the Uttar Pradesh, Dadar and Nagar Haveli, Madhya Pradesh and Damanio are the top four performing states in math or in math, while Delhi, Meghalaya, Pondicherry, and Tamil Nadu are for a top bottom four performing states. The second uh, tab is the impact of distance. So averaging the, I just switched to another tab, impact of distance. So averaging the marks in all subjects, we calculated the overall performance treating this as a filter, just like another subject. So what we have done, we have introduced another uh, two new other attributes, that is population for a state and GDP per capita. And based on these two attributes, we have divided the state into three clusters, cluster one, two, and three. Cluster one contains Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, Haryana, Punjab, Orisha, and so on. Cluster 2 contains Delhi, Goa, Chandigarh, Sikkim, and then the cluster 3 contains Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, UP, West Bengal, so on. Based on the selection of cluster, we have tried to come up with some insight. So, taking the example of cluster 3, and the subject as math. With the increase in distance, the average mark is decreasing for math in cluster 3. Similar is the performance for social science. Again, we have plotted a correlation between the marks in different subject and distance pockets. Clearly, here. Clearly from the red dots, we can see there is a negative association in performance in math and the distance across all states. So we have done a deep dive and identified the district where the issue is prominent. So the score is math, for so in math, and we take an example of taking here Chandigarh and the district of Southern. So to see with the median distance in TV, the average mark is decreasing with the steepness. The next step shows the impact of parents' education in occupation. So overall, Daman and Diu and Kerala are performing well as compared to other states uh, in all of the subjects. And they are getting uh, high median mark in reading, science and social science. While Maharashtra is doing good in reading and with the percentage age of balance uh, per reading So this is a table uh, explanation. We, have, uh, we can again switch to sheet map. So we have provided a filter of subject and state, and then the attributes are taken as occupation versus education. So uh, it can be father of occupation, mother's occupation, or father education, mother's education. So taking the example of math and subject as Tamil Nadu, and just stick in one, and the attribute as mother's education and mother's occupation. We can clearly show the students, the mothers who are with the teacher and lecturer and who have completed senior secondary, those students are scoring high marks in, uh, as compared to the other students. The, uh, the other filter can be for Kerala. And the subject is social study. So if you see the mother uh, occupation is clerk and she is a big and above, they are studying good scoring in social science. So this was the valuable insight which we got from the uh, data. The third tab is impact of siblings. We have represented the subject by average mark for different siblings count in the first chart. So the chart is clear that the average score in reading for all the sibling groups seems to be significantly more as compared to other subjects. And having a, one sibling is seen to improve the average mark for all subjects on an overall except math. If you see the 
स्टूडेंट इज हैविंग वन फिल्डिंग दैट इज अ पर्पल कलर दे आर स्कोरिंग बेटर बेटर मार्क्स इन एवरी अदर सब्जेक्ट इन बैटिंग मैथ्स एंड एक्सेप्ट फॉर मैथ्स मोर देन वन सिबलिंग इज हैविंग टू ए निगेटिव इम्पैक्ट टू डील डॉन फर्दर वी हैव कैटेगराइज द डेटा इन टू टू सेट्स सेट वन एज्यूम टू बी इकोनॉमिकली वीकर लाइक फार्मर लेबर स्किल वर्कर एंड एम्प्लॉय एंड सेट टू बी बेटर लाइक बिजनेस प्रोफेशनल क्लर्क टेक्निकल एंड लेक्चर वी थॉट दिस वुड इनेबल अस टू इंट्रोड्यूस अनदर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ दैट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक बैकअप ऑफ स्टूडेंट सो वी नीड टू चेंज द फिल्टर सब्जेक्ट साइंस टेक एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ साइंस एंड स्टेट एस चंडीगढ़ We can see there is a negative impact of the number of siblings. So as the number of siblings increases, the average mark is decreasing. In in that one group of people, that is economically weaker section. And taking another example for math and for West Bengal, the number of siblings having negative impact. With people in the sect two, that is from uh, in the economically stronger section, the number of people in the sect two, average mark is decreasing with the filter of math and English language. Third, in the last last part, predictive model. So. I will wind up with just give a brief in important important that we have taken the variables and their importance by using we have taken the exbus algorithm to understand which attribute is best best in explaining the marks. For example, Haryana. I will take an example of Haryana with overall features. So attributes which are important is like English is difficult and the use of dictionary. So overall, the learning infrastructure and opportunity of playing games and sports may be an important tool for Haryana. This was like the importance of attributes for that state based on the subject overall subject. Another example can be Arunachal Pradesh. Available availability of learning infrastructure like calculator, library, and computer, along with financial condition of family, play a significant role. So, the attribute is not constant. It depends upon the subject and the state which is meant for the study. It, it, it varies. So, this has been explained with the help of bar chart and with the help of uh, relative number of observations in the pie chart. With this, I would be like to end my presentation. Can we have a okay for a question? What is this uh, image? Uh, what what tools have you used? We have used our shiny and we are ghost. So, so are there any key tip? Were there any key takeaways or or recommendations you derive from the data? Uh, sorry, can you come again? But, uh, so after you've done this analysis, was was there any key recommendation for improving educational achievement that you can see? Yeah. Uh, Actually, uh, due to connection, uh, I couldn't uh, hear the uh, question. Only me. Could you please repeat? So, yeah, sir, sir, yeah, sir, 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 yeah, sir, 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 sir. The question is, what is the key recommendation you recommend based on this analysis of data? Any recommendation you'd like to recommend? Okay, this uh, so primarily in most of the states for the overall performance of the students in most of the states we saw the infrastructural problem is a major issue for students. Uh, uh, who is studying in classes? So the, if the infrastructural problem like uh, availability of dictionary, availability of library, or 
uh, like uh, computer usage facility these kind of things if we can improve uh, in place to place then the overall performance of the student in most of the states might improve that's our recommendation and this recommendation actually we have uh, break, uh, we have break, uh, broken down in uh, different states uh, if you if you go if you go to the filter of states and if you can uh, choose the subject from the data what kind of importance the variables are playing you can directly see like uh, animate uh, animate just uh, select any other uh, other states uh, apart from like bihar you can bihar you can uh, select bihar or satis or bihar okay okay this overall score is essentially the average of all other subject score so we have the overall in the uh, subject filter now you can see uh the only uh, go little bit down go little bit yeah so uh, you can see here uh, there is a uh, language is a priority for bihar we can see uh, they prioritize the language over all other subjects another thing and uh, there is a gender bias towards boy in the system so this kind of thing we need to taken care of like uh, there is uh, another thing like, like dictionary they they are not using dictionary properly they they don't have uh, enough facility to use the dictionary and uh, they need to read magazine every day magazine facility they need to be there and uh, further education that is playing another important role in the performance of the student the class yeah that this kind of the recommendation bro broken down in different states and different subjects we are providing within the dashboard by this module great thank you Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you. That was presentation number five. The team from Data Consultancy Services. We'll. Uh, We'll give the judges a couple of minutes to get over here and then we can get started. All right. The next presentation up on stage is um, number six. This is Team Iceberg from the National Institute of Design, and here to represent them are Prashanta Datta, Arumal Ram, and Rajshri Deshmukh.
folks, just bear with us a couple of minutes. We're just waiting for that camera to set up over here and we'll get started. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are Team Iceberg. Uh, we are information design students from National Institute of Design, Bangalore. Uh, myself, Prashant Kumar Dutta. Raj. I am Rajshree. I am Aramal Ram. Uh, so, we chose the data set on National Achievement Survey, the one with the student data set. The reason for choosing this data set was because we could relate to it. And we believed that if we can come up with uh, actionable insights on this, there can be something important that we can do with it. So uh, I'll briefly go over what we did with the data. Uh, briefly going through it, it's basically uh, marks on four different subjects, the elementary subjects of maths, language, or reading as they call it, science and social science, and the performance of uh, students uh, across these subjects. Uh, uh, depending on different factors, social, their demographics, their parents' uh, information, and so on and so forth. So uh, the first thing that we did was uh, take a look at this data and find out how are the people performing, like how the pe students performed in this test. The next one, we tried to figure out how are the different factors and the students' performance are uh, related, how, what affects it. And then we took a, a deeper dive into the data and uh, figured out, okay, uh, okay, so when we talk about school, one common notion that comes up is toppers, failures, and average. Everybody wants to know what do toppers do that they get so they top, and what where are the failures lagging behind? So that is something that we took as the premise of our uh, narrative. So we tried to figure out how these different factors, or what is that that makes them different, or is there at all that make anything uh, like is there at all anything that actually differentiates between the two of them. So uh, initial analysis was uh, done, the data cleaning analysis was done in Python and Tableau. And uh, then it was for in, the form of it in the form of a visual narrative uh, built using web and D3. So yeah. Um, 
So this data set is from National Achievement Survey from, by NCRT and which was done over 6,722 schools. And in this survey, uh, around 1,80,000 students were surveyed for their performance in four major subjects, which is reading, maths, social science and science. So when we started data analysis, what we wanted to do is find out what is the shape of the data. How is the data distributed among the students? What is the distribution of marks? So for this, we came up with what we as Team Iceberg call performance, uh, waves of performances for four different subjects. So here we have reading, social science, uh, the blue one, the green one is science, and next is maths. So the x-axis uh, here is uh, the marks from 0 to 100, and the y-axis is basically the magnitude, uh, the number of students for that, at that mark point. So here we see, for reading, we have quite interesting pattern which is rising. There are a lot of ups and downs at frequent intervals. And the drops here are as low as zero. So the, this is actual data what we got, which shows that there were a lot of marks in between which is not awarded to any of the students in this 1,80,000 set. So same with social science, there are quite of ups and downs, but then there are marks awarded. It's not zero right away. And uh, for science and social science, uh, for science and maths, it's a general distribution overall, the, the general bell curve. So in this plot, we also see what is the major distribution of students. Most of the students lie between like 25 to 50 range. So we see how the distribution of students is across. Uh, let's continue. So from among this 1,80,000 students, 64% have failed in at least one subject. Uh, on contrary, there are only, uh, there's only 3.4% who, who have achieved 80% uh, and more in one subject without failing in any other subject. Now this is quite unbalanced. And we wanted to see why it is so. So we came up with uh, two subsets of the student groups, the achievers and the underachievers. Achievers are the students who have scored 80% and above in the subject. Underachievers are students who have scored 33 and less in that subject. So the same data, we split it for the different subjects, maths, reading, science and social science. And we see the most number of underachievers are for maths, while the most number of achievers are for reading. So let's move on. So now we ask the question, what factors affect the marks of a student? So there were various factors that were considered in the survey. So what we first tried to do was consider all the factors and then we grouped them into uh, demographic student behavior, pastime, parents and school based on their similarities. Because some of them were related to demographics while some were related to the habits of parents. And then what to find the effect of each of these parameters on the marks, we made a correlation matrix. For that, we found correlation factor for each of these parameters against the subject. Now, the encoding here is the a positive correlation is indicated by blue, while negative correlation is indicated by red color, and the size indicates the amount of correlation. So as you can see, reading here seems to be the subject that is most affected by most of the, most of the parameters here. And even though, uh, statistically speaking, you need 0.5 for stronger correlation. Here we are getting only around 0.2 to 0.3, but that is, but at least that is giving us an indication of area to explore. Now to see the, uh, now we can see how the parents' education is affecting the marks of a student. So here, the father's education has a positive correlation of 0.19% on reading. That means the more the father is educated, the better the student will perform in the marks. So, as you can see, the social factors seem to be the major effectors for the mark of student. Now, uh, in terms of these factors, we try to find out how different are the underachievers from the achievers. So, for, so for this, again, as mentioned before, we took the two subsets of underachievers and achievers, and then we plotted them against all the, fa all the factors that were mentioned. So here we took a diverging bar graph which shows the performance of uh, achievers in blue and underachievers in red. So as an example, for if you take the gender and how gender is affecting maths, 
there are more number of so the length indicates the number of or the number of students the the share of students that have that are there and the intensity of color indicates the marks of that section so here for maths you can see there are more number of girl students in this particular survey that was there while the performance of the boys are slightly better compared to compared to girls so like this we have correlated all the factors uh, also uh, like uh, if we say for maths uh, when we look at siblings uh, single child seems to be the most common scenario however uh, in general we see that there are darker colors for both uh, underachievers and achievers so in general children with siblings at least one or two siblings tend to perform slightly better than the other uh, other rest of them similarly if we look at uh, say whether they have private tuition well uh, 60% of the students did not take private tuitions but then people who had private tuitions they scored uh, better than slightly better than those who don't then there are things like playing games watching tv reading magazine so when we look at factors like reading magazine we find that uh, it seems to have a positive effect on the subject reading so well so now uh, let's see uh, in the previous section we found out that reading seems to be the uh, most affected by the different factors so uh, let's see how parents uh, education affects uh, reading our uh, percentages so here as you can see uh, the toppers are on the blue, uh, on the blue color and you can clearly see that and you can clearly see the distinction of the dark color where the parents have an education of degree and above so their performance is clearly higher than the ones who have parents with secondary or senior education this is the uh, this holds true even for even for the students who are failing even in that category the students who have parents who have degree or above are scoring comparatively better than the ones who are who, do, who don't have educated parents well so what does it mean from what we have seen uh, till now we can say that uh, the factors that seem to affect uh, the performance most are the social factors like parents education occupation how, uh, if they're above or below poverty line and also students habits like uh, how they study and what are the things uh, they read and things like that factors which do not seem to affect much are say gender watching tv uh, playing using computer using internet like definitely they uh, do have a positive impact but then uh, the impact isn't much different from uh, that on uh, achievers and underachievers so uh, let's say uh, to see what to what extent these social factors affect the marks we can see one uh, to take two, two simple cases one where uh, students have illiterate parents live below poverty line and have no private tuition so there are around 11000 such students out of which 69.96% are underachievers while only 1.75% are achievers in case two we have taken uh, students who have graduate parents live uh, live above poverty line and have access to private tuition but sadly there are only 621 such students in this but then uh, the number of underachievers in this is less than half of what we saw in case one while the number of achievers is almost 10% of the other case so we can see that social factors uh, seem to have a huge impact on learning and academic performance of a student uh, the other factors that uh, may not affect the uh, performance in academics but it also affects the quality of life of a student so uh, factors like playing uh, watching tv and things like that they are critical in personal development and they can uh, contribute to the overall well-being of the student in general so uh, we come to this conclusion that uh, with 64.2% of the total students surveyed uh, being underachievers the new challenge for education according to the survey is not just providing access to education but also to make sure uh, it progresses in the right direction thank you yeah. i don't understand your last line what do you mean by not just providing access but ensuring progress so basically what we mean is that as of now the people uh, the solution now the government is trying is to make sure that more number of students reach schools or get access to school but the problem here is the performance shows that 64% of the students are still failing so that means we need to move on from just providing access to school but making sure the students progress also like the social factors does not just limit so them from if, 
if these if this analysis was presented back to you right and you are the education minister of the country what what would what action would you take on that two words ensuring progress uh, so as of now i think i think i'll take make uh, i'll take actions to measure the progress of the student in each time because i think this survey itself was done no, you're saying ensuring progress you're not saying measuring progress when you say ensuring progress it means that you will improve certain parameters right which parameters will you improve so that the underachievers comes down from 64% to you know some other percent so here one of the main factors was the social impact uh, because of poverty and the fathers and mothers education the uh, children, uh, children were performing uh, not quite good so if uh, our schools make sure that we provide better like maybe home school them or have another private tuition free education so that they can go around because in their free time if they understand how to go about the subject they'll perform better right now they don't have that much help i guess i think and social factors seems more to be like a trickle down effect of the so i mean education seems to be more like a trickle down effect of the social factors that's what at least the, this data is showing so if we improve the social factors generally the education has to improve and also i'd like to add one thing we have seen that there are factors uh, uh, which is like uh, ease of living uh, which affects the quality of life of students so we have seen they have a positive impact so it definitely should uh, the schools or like whoever the is the policy maker should definitely ensure that those positive impact uh, factors are taken into account because as it is they are affecting the toppers so if their influence is increased in terms of under uh, for underachievers they can get definitely get out of that zone so that probably would be a start that we would suggest yeah uh, i have just uh, one question so this does have uh, data pertaining to the different states right uh, so this conclusion is it uniform across the country or is it different for different states did you have a look at that no the the performance of an underachiever and achiever doesn't change much based on uh, the state wise the it's the almost the same form only thing is that states that have better better inf like better on the human development index like kerala and all slight perform slightly better but then there was a slight problem with the data also because states underperforming seem to have more number of toppers also that's fine i mean but uh, you said you analyzed the difference across the country and found it is the same it wasn't strong enough for us to put it at least be between underachievers and achievers okay thanks sasan Um, so at one point you spoke about um, you 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 were linking certain attributes to academic achievement with a a, a correlation scale of uh, minus one to one. Can you just dis discuss a little bit the the um, the statistical methods you use to derive that correlation? Um, we used um, that uh, Pearson's method. Basically, we use the Pearson's factor to find the correlation. and then they will be brought up that's why we said for stronger correlation actually the value should be 0.5 or more but here it was just giving an indicator of what might affect and and so I, i'm going to uh, i'm going to poke you again on what my 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 uh my colleague judge also asked you on so if you if you were from all this data if you were forced to really pick something a real a, a specific action that you would recommend from the data was there something that that that, that appears in your mind because your 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 main recommendation it's very it's it's somewhat ambiguous it's hard to really hold so uh, there are things like uh, help in household so uh, when we see among the uh, toppers they don't seem to at all uh, help in household so which makes sense for them like they are always busy studying and in their academics but for the average and the underachievers people who help in household uh, may not always have a, a positive impact on their marks so for example people who are for example in for especially for reading so uh, they don't have a positive impact on their marks at all probably because they are too busy helping out their parents taking care of their shops it can be any reason so one factor that i would underline over here is the underlying uh, poverty i'm sorry to say but yes 
And so in order to just, uh, okay, so this analysis is purely based on the data that was provided. So now if we probably correlate with a data sets of these parents' uh, occupation, how well they do in their lives and how much they involve their parent, uh, students, uh, I mean children, in household activities or how much freedom they give to them for studying and all. So probably then we could get some more insights as to, but then poverty is something that I would underline in this matter. Yeah. So that's a very clever insight you just said, where, where, where often I see an analysis where the, the only logical conclusion is, is another analysis with another data set, and that is saying like, hey, we have, we have, we have a hint of something here, but really um, the data we really needed to take it to the next step wasn't, wasn't here, and that would really be the right next step. So it's, uh, I applaud you on that, on that conclusion. Thank you. And was there any uh, uh, difference between vernacular and English medium, or was that up? So uh, if we see, oh, hold on. Yeah, uh, so when we see same language, so same language means, uh, the uh, medium of education in school is the same as the vernacular. So especially for reading, we can clearly see that it has a negative correlation. So probably uh, reading in, uh, considering CBSE schools, the language uh, for reading is English. So for science and social science, while teachers probably explain in the vernacular language and students are e uh, can easily grasp it, when it comes to reading, which you have to do in English, students uh, don't do well enough. So yeah, it does have an impact. Thank you. Thank you, Team Iceberg. The team following them is uh, Zeus. Also from the National Institute of Design and here to present is Nishant Minj. Uh, hello everyone, um, I am Nishant Julian Minj, studying New Media Design at National Institute of Design, Gandhinagar. And uh, I'll start with uh, the data set. I have chosen a National Achievement Survey because firstly, it resonates with uh, responsibility and social issue. And secondly, being a student myself, uh, I can uh, have a connection to it. So. Um, why National Achievement Survey? Uh, well, uh, it, uh, it provides a snapshot on what factors affect the marks of class 8 students. And uh, it has uh, been measured across 6,000 schools, uh, 24,000 uh, teachers and 1.8 lakh students. But anyway, after having all this data, like why do we need to uh, do data visualization? Well, because uh, nowadays we live in a world of data and we are surrounded by it, but we don't really understand it. There's a gap. So to fill the gap, we um, do uh, data visualization. Also, data visualization here accelerates the performance of data analysis by reducing the cognitive load as it was mentioned in the morning presentation. So. Uh, the tools I used was Tableau Public. Uh, 
mainly because uh, it was easy to learn implement and it has an awesome community behind it so i got to learn a lot about it also it's very feature rich so uh, looking at the visualization uh, it has been grouped into four uh, different uh, sections first is uh, the parameters or the selectors section where you can have different options where you can know uh, select the different parameters you want to work with second is uh, the radial or state graph where every information is divided according to the state third is uh, how one of the parameters compare with the average marks of the student and uh, finally there at the center there is a comparison bubble graph so uh, i'll start with the universal parameter uh, let's talk it like this what if a principal of a school wants to know how the resources at uh, his school affects the marks of the student so uh, let's uh, let's say uh, let's take library use so i select library use so all the data gets uh, distributed according to the library use and uh, below here we can see that uh, schools with no library has comparatively less marks than less average marks than uh, with library so it doesn't matter if it's once a week or uh, more than once a week having a library affects some average marks suppose a teacher wants to know how students ex expressing uh, the subject as in uh, let's take science views mm. okay yeah how expressing science views affects the average marks so we can clearly see that uh, if the student agrees to uh, expressing uh, science views he has relatively more marks let me uh, highlight the signs yeah. so here you can see the graph goes up thus also um, not just teachers suppose uh, parents want to know how watching tv affects the marks of students so i'll just scroll down to watch tv and um, the data get uh, represented by the watch tv factor where uh, you can say that it doesn't really affect much except the reading average marks where it improves the average also the data can be uh, sorted according to state like suppose i selected uh, jammu kashmir so the data will uh, consolidate to only the records that have uh, that are being collected from jammu kashmir so but yeah here also but here we see a different uh, thing uh, the students who have actually spent uh, time watching tv once a month fared less than uh, people who watch it every day so like while going through also you can find a lot of things suppose i now select it back to all also just uh, instead of just dropping down and picking a state you can also uh, see in the radial chart the same universal factor has been divided state wise so let's see uh, here is for karnataka people or uh, students who watch tv every day uh, number of records is 5000 and uh, in kerala oh that's an invalid value so okay uh, let's say gujarat so in gujarat we can see the relation is similar people uh, students who watch uh, tv every day have significantly better reading percentage so uh, also just by comparing parameter with the average marks was not enough so i have a section here to compare one parameter with another like watching tv and uh, let's say uh, distance so how many students actually watch tv every day and uh, how is it related to distance so uh, uh, let's see hmm. so a lot many students who live closer to their homes 
uh, who has schools closer closer to homes uh watch tv every day just like 148294 okay hmm. also uh not just uh, watching tv or how many uh, kilometers is between your home and your school you uh, also had a third parameter where you can divide the data further into uh, demographics or uh, demographics like uh, gender age category so if i want i can also divide the entire data into boys and girls as in uh, right now you can see how many uh, like boys and girls who stay more than 5 uh, kilometers apart from school have uh, watched tv every day and the total number of records is in the tooltip uh, the size of the bubbles here depends on the total number of records that satisfies the given criteria and uh, suppose i want to uh, select only uh, students who watch tv every day and the distance is up to 1 km and a boy so i'll filter the entire data according to that and in that you can see uh, how that affects the marks of the students as in yeah you know, the average uh, reading marks is uh, 45 and um, the average maths maths marks is 32 so also the radial stay graph uh, changes in a way that uh, the same criteria is, is now applied to all the states so it, okay so after this uh, uh what i tried to do here was try to make a playful uh, visualization of uh, the data that i was given uh, and uh, the insights while uh, going through my visualization i got was uh, resources at school doesn't matter if it's uh, like how much students use it if it's there it affects the marks of the students so if i just say um, yeah computer use so like better than uh, not having a computer it's better to have it because that increases the chances of uh, students having average marks more in reading and uh, also uh apart from uh, the data or the other insights i got was um uh yeah this okay like playing games really affects the marks of the students so people who play than uh, never play their uh, average marks is really high so um like uh, after this uh, talking about the uh, values i received the tangible values would be uh, i learned about data visualization and uh, tableau which i had like learned nothing before and uh, intangible is um, well a data can represent a lot more if uh, presented properly also like uh, when i uh, sh show about uh, how distance and uh, watching uh, tv are related it can be like uh, might be there is no more number of students who wants to live near their school or who go to school nearby that's why uh, it's up to 1 km and uh, the the distance is up to 1 km and they watch tv every day so there can be hidden insights also hidden in the data so thank you thank you there's a lot of correlation uh, examples uh, i also noticed that you know this was your visualization dashboard the right hand side was hardly used at all could have 
yeah uh, probably done lot more with that right but here's a question of all the stuff that you you showed us you can play around with and most of it is correlation mm -hmm. given that you're now familiar with this data and what you can do with it what is the one single problem you would like to solve with this mm. uh what i would love to uh, do is make a attractive and interactive workstation like for data so that the people who actually work on the data they can uh, see the like they are more uh, interested in to look at the changes rather than just going through the report they can uh, actually interact with it with every parameter in a uh, less number of uh, dashboards and less number of graphs than now uh, going through a bunch of pages so um i i appreciate this a lot i lo i love the way that there's a one stop shop for all this data and i appreciate your point that you you th that's what you you want to enable people to explore with the data yes. My my, the the shortcoming I saw, and I, I was just wondering what your what your thoughts were, is that if I went to this dashboard and I and I wanted to find the relevant data, I have to kind of go through yes. all the parameters one at a time, and I, and I was and, and I can imagine I would I would I would want this dashboard to just to proactively serve up the most interesting yes. insights. So I don't know if you had thoughts about about how to either how to get that from the dashboard or how, or what you would do differently if you had more time to resolve that issue uh i would have then uh, divided uh, all the parameters that i have subject wise home wise and how the family affects so that uh, you can just go to the family first and then select how the mother education or the father education or occupation affects the entire dashboard does this make it far break out many more views yes and also like i would uh, have added another uh, chart near the average mark chart because average doesn't really show much i could have used percentile for uh, better analysis Thank you, Nishant. Firstly, as a parent, I hope my daughters never meet you. Because I think with that data point of watching TV every day and improving achievement, they could arm twist me quite a bit. <laughs> All right. We'll move on to team number eight. This is Drishti from Manipal ProLearn. And here representing them are Archana KM, Soumya Raj Kumari, and Kavya Sudeep. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Saumya Rajkumari. I'm Archana. We are from Manipal. We are pursuing PG diploma course in data science. And the main reason we selected IPL is because most of them are interested in IPL. They are like, they have a cricket fever, I must say. And if you see today's presentation, most of them opted for IPL itself. This is our dashboard. This gives the total. 
sorry this gives the total number of wins this gives the toss decision what the winning team have selected the bar represents the run rate and the circle represents the day which they have played this bar sheet shows the maximum shows that the maximum number of players were nick games were held at mumbai and the trend chart here shows the average run rate i would like if my judges would select a team from that space over to archana so as per our data it is like uh, we have the first chart is like here wise the number of wins that the chennai super kings has scored so it is like uh, in 2008 it was 18 and 2009 it was increasing like increasing trend till 2013 and from 2013 it is again it has again started decreasing so that is the year wise straight like year wise uh, winning rate of uh, chennai super kings and uh, to the bottom we have this uh, decision which they made when they got a chance to uh, have the toss so most of the decisions were mainly they chose batting uh, over fielding so chennai super kings have better chances of winning if they choose uh, batting is i what i suppose from the data and uh, the radial bar chart uh, the length of the bar actually represents the score rate on that particular date of the match run rate of the of that particular day match and over the right we have this uh, venue wise uh, number of wins chennai has scored so this is the main insight from this uh, data set that chennai super kings actually scored like one most number of matches when they were playing at chennai so this was the main insight if we choose a different uh, if we choose mumbai indians suppose then also it will be like mumbai indians won the most number of matches at mumbai and this this pattern is observed for almost all the teams even kolkata knight riders it the most number of matches was won at kolkata so this is like for a uh, a common pattern and when we are observing this like as a whole um, we can see that um, this uh, there is an exception like uh, kochi tuskers kochi uh, tuskers kerala they actually won only like 12 times and uh, they always in uh, even after like so low rate of uh, winning they have always opted to field but they have never chose to actually bat in any of their matches and uh, what we have below is the uh, if we want to compare two to three teams any number of teams how their performance is going towards the overwise performance so it is basically observed that by the end of the match there is an upward trend actually like initially even if the like at the start of the over it is basically they are actually increasing towards the end of the like at the end of 20 overs 21 overs the trend is actually increasing so here it is like displayed for kolkata knight riders and mumbai indians uh, we can choose uh, suppose i am choosing deccan chargers and delhi daredevils uh, this was an animation chart but i am sorry that i was not suppose i am not able to do that so this was like for each so here so we can this is like the average run rate so we can actually um, understand how a team is performing uh, on an average how they are scoring the runs at each over level so yeah that's it thank, thank you sir no no we haven't provided season as a filter we we thought of only giving this one global filter so that the 
person who is exploring this doesn't act actually have to choose multiple options. Who is this for? Who's your audience for this? Any, who use this dashboard? Anyone who actually is not too much into cricket because uh, like anybody who is too much into cricket will know all the aspects. But this is just about mostly about winners and how their team is actually performing at each over. So it is like for any person who knows just some basics of cricket, they can actually use this dashboard. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. And so to understand, the, so the mission of this is really, infer, 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 it's a reporting alone, and you, you intentionally left aside uh, analysis or decision making, is that, is that correct? I don't get you, sir. Um, I sort of understand that the, the mission, the purpose of this dashboard was really for reporting purposes. And really, yes. you, you kind of intentionally left aside analytics and decision making analysis. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, team Drishti. The next team up on stage is uh, Stacked by Bar from Positive Integers and Rahul Narendranath is here to present. Yeah, that, that'll be better actually. <coughs> Hello. Uh, good evening, good afternoon everyone. I'm Rahul. So for this tournament, what I decided to choose was the voter survey data. So that was the easiest of the lot. <laughs> according to me, so that is why I've chosen it. And within that, I've decided to look at a very simple aspect. I just wanted to understand the non-voter characteristics. So in any election, you've got people who vote and who don't vote. So I just wanted to identify or at least come up or characterize the non-voters from the survey data that was provided. So to start off, so there were roughly around 230K odd voted voters who were whose data is available here. Of that, only about 30K, so that's somewhere around 14% of them have got, who have not voted at all, and for which they've given some information or the other. And within that, if you look at the top four states that account for these non-voters, you look at its most, they belong to UP, Bihar, Mahara, Maharashtra, and Madhya Pradesh. So these are the top four states, and I'd, pro I'd just be concentrating only on these top four states because they account for almost, like, as I've mentioned here, about 50% of the entire non-voter base. So, and as I've just provided another chart here below, which is more of an indication of the size, the bigger the size, the more the number of non-voters in each state. So it's pretty obvious that, you know, UP has got right, the, the biggest raw, the, the, this thing, the value there. And then it's followed by Bihar, Maharashtra, and Madhya Pradesh. So moving on to UP. Uh, just a second. Huh, yeah. So I've dissected them across three parameters. So it's mostly age, occupation, and religion. So I've st I've stuck to these three points alone. So by the looks of it, what seems to be, you know, it's pretty evident that 
the 18 to 30 age group is what is who are primarily not voting across and this is a trend that i've observed across all the four states here so i mean it'll, it'll follow all those things and in addition to that you can see that you know thank you ha huh. so you can see that most of them who were like among the males if i were to just click on this uh, it's loading. Yeah, so primarily most of the men who did not vote were students and this was followed by laborers and things like that and just like that if you look at for women it's they primarily were housewives and this trend is following up across the four states that I've mentioned you know states like uh, Bihar, I mean Bihar it is a lot more evident, you know, the labor force accounts for majority of them across, again, men as well. So that is there. And then, so, if you look at a state like, where is this? Uh, right, so again, so Madhya Pradesh, like I was telling, very similar characteristics across all four states, meaning you've got your people who are like aged between 18 and 30 and people who are primarily laborers who have not voted. Only a slight deviation from this was observed in Maharashtra where, you know, the split was a lot more even. So you can find like there is a, there are a lot of people who are aged between 30 and 40 also who have not like voted a lot. And within that, you can see housewives like take up a lot of that, like women especially. So how that that seems to be a very common pattern that you can observe here. And like so, now that you've got all these basic, you know, understanding of what these people are, I just decided to look at one final thing to see what these people look in a candidate. So again, I've chosen what they want out of a candidate and very surprisingly, you can see that most of them would actually want their candidate to be associated with some, you know, good work, a social cause or something. And this is quite frankly, it was very surprising. So any of the, most of them. So if you look at all these states, you've got UP, you've got Maharashtra, uh, again, which is like, they always want the candidates who are like associated with good work and all that. So, so these are the few things that I could, you know, look at and come up with. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you. So you've chosen certain parameters and compared it for the four states that you chose as the top high ones. Yes. Sir. But uh, how does it compare with an overall average, if you will? Uh, so I have purposefully looked at only these four states, you know, for sake of understanding and coming up with a story that I thought was something that I could weave around with. So that is why I chose these four states, sir. Okay. No other reason. Yeah, thanks. So one thing I, I really want to uh, applaud you for is that you, you were handed a very vast data set and you decided to focus on something specific. Yeah. So instead of getting overwhelmed, you said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ignore the forest, I'm going to grab a tree and go for it, which is really good, very smart. Um, if, if you go to the middle tab, I, one thing that troubled me, so you, like, for, like right here you, you have a raw count per age group, yeah. but so I don't know... What I'm left wondering is, all right, do people 18 to 30, is that, are they are they particularly likely not to vote, or is that actually a, a perfect reflection of that group's proportion in the overall population? Uh, so, right, yeah. so I wish you had made that a percentage of, of the huh, raw yeah. population, so I, I had a better sense that, that if there really is a, now you got saved because of, for the, for the, for, for the, all the other states, you saw that it was really, like, it was just clearly uh, a, a far more prominent bar. So I think you are, interestingly enough, I think you have, you have, have a clear takeaway, which is if I was running a political party, I would do outreach for that age group because I know there's, there's, there's a lot of room for growth and development there. So in that, in that sense, it's, it's very successful. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Rahul. The final team up on stage is Team Kabaddi, representing Ford Motor Company. Please welcome Kritika, Durga Priya, and Tanish Pasha. A picture speaks a thousand words, but a good visualization can speak more than that. So, good evening everybody. Thank you so much for this opportunity and we are delighted to be here to present our uh, analysis, whatever we did. And we are Team Kabadi and uh, having said that, uh, my name is Tanish Bacha and machine learning and deep learning is my interest and area of work. And I have with me Kritika, who is my colleague and she likes adventure and numbers. And Durga, she has a curious mind to bridge the gap between uh, data, data science and art. So one common thing that brings us between or a pattern between us like we all work together, we like data and we all work from food. So moving forward, why did we choose this data set? Uh, I asked my colleagues and myself, so how many constituencies are there in your state? I was, I, I didn't know this and a couple of my friends were not also aware of, aware of it. So I thought probably there is a gap of awareness or I, maybe I, we should take this data set and analyze. And there's another reason as well due to current political scenarios. We know like at least in uh, Tamil Nadu for the past one year, like every odd month we hear uh, new political parties coming up. So probably TN is a good place for political startups. So that's another reason we want to analyze this uh, data set, what people think about it. And these are the... Uh, Pretty much a couple of variables we consider, the constituencies, the political parties, the peer respondents, uh, demographic, their opinion about the candidates and performance score on different metrics. Let's just jump into this uh, dashboard which we have created. Uh, <coughs> so we, uh, in this dashboard, we, we try to show the demo, we try to see the demographic of the people and what is the proportion of their respondents. So it seems like 68% uh, of them are male and rest are female and rural constitutes about 70% which obviously like village is the backbone of India. And the age limit goes up to like 30 to 40 people belong to the age or like 32% of the respondents and 28% respondents are from uh, uh, 20 to 30. It's a good mix of 70s, 80s and 90s kids. Okay, so now let's look at this bar, the candidate and the ca candidate's party. So what people think about uh, these two figures. So let me just run it through a couple of uh, states. So we see like the red, I mean, uh, yellow and the green uh, bars take the priority in most of the states, but except in West Bengal. So West Bengal feels like the candidate is more important than a candidate's party. Whereas the rest of the state, they feel like uh, the candidate, I mean, sorry, the West Bengal feels like candidate is not important, the candidate's party is important. It's just the other way about in the rest of India. So it was quite surprising. Uh, on the counter note, they also feel like candidate's caste and religion is very important, which is the other story in the rest of India. So let's, uh, and... The state color represents the score on them. So green represents they are very good and the red represents like they are doing bad. So let's run through like a couple of uh, issues. Uh, let's see like better garbage clearance. Do you see something wrong here? There's red color on Gujarat. So, and also this uh, survey was taken December 2013 to Feb 2014. 
and we are very much aware of swachh bharat so when this survey was taken our narendra modi was the chief minister of gujarat state so probably he he might have probably got an inspiration from uh, gujarat that uh, cleanliness is important so that was one of the important manifesto when during the pm's uh, election manifestos okay uh, let's run through uh, maybe women yeah security for women so we have a, it, it's it's usually uh, perceived that delhi is known to be unsafe place for women and also there is a report that states in 2015 that 40 percentage of the cases uh, against women harassment comes from delhi but what we see here is like delhi is totally green so which was totally opposite to what we thought maybe it is portrayed in that way or the cases which we heard may not be from delhi exactly it might be from the outskirts even the famous nirbhaya case it it's not exactly from delhi it's in the outskirts of delhi maybe haryana or punjab nearby so these are one of the findings and one thing i i want to let me just run through the different issues please focus on the top of you know, the northern part of india there is one particular states that remains to be in red or in yellow can you tell me which one is it mp and uh, no it's on the top no jammu and kashmir we don't have the data at all it's punjab so for the betterment of the crowd and the guests who are not from india the punjab is here so most of the metrics which we saw punjab ended up at the bottom 3 out of the 30 metrics which is present here out of the 27 punjab was in the bottom 3 and in two cases they were on the bottom 5 the rest of three cases they were on the bottom 5 so it seems like punjab is the most unhappy state of all and probably we saw like uh, pa- during that that period eight out of 13 there are 13 constituencies in punjab eight of them were ruled by uh, congress and apparently in 2014 election congress lost five of it four of them went to aam aadmi and one went to bjp so they had only three seats so let's come to the next dashboard here what we are trying to pick is like uh, eight eight uh, important metrics which we we feel is important the top two charts complement each other and the bottom two complement each other the top one is regarding the agriculture and by the way the uh, the size of the bubble is like how many respondents came from it and it looks like shiv sena and swami bhadi baksha are doing pretty good in agriculture loan availability electricity for agriculture as well as in irrigation program and seeds and fertilizer subsidiary and they are all from maharashtra and one interesting thing to see is like right now we have heard the news like farmers are marching to mumbai uh it, it's really intriguing and during this uh, shiv sena had around uh, 11 seats and now they have 18 seats probably people were inspired by this and they voted for them more now they have 18 seats and we don't know what's happening right now they are falling apart or maybe it needs more of in depth analysis and one thing to notice like most of kind of linear relationship and most of the regional parties are are on a linear relationship but there are two famous uh, uh, national parties like uh, bjp and congress they are clustered in the middle in both the cases and uh, obviously if the bubble is big because the number of uh, respondents are more there and one thing let's note here kerala is on the top and kerala is known to have known to be the most literate state in india which 93% which obviously satisfy here because they have a reservation for jobs in education and it's also satisfied here they have a better school and uh, one uh, another another thing to notice like bihar is said to be like the least rated state with 63% but it seems like bihar is getting a better school according to people what say but, uh, but it is not in the bottom part and as we saw before punjab is in the bottom on both the cases and gujarat seems to be performing better on employment but they are lacking behind in better hospitality and schools yeah going to the next one we want to see like how the entire uh, political parties entire political parties are performing across so as you can see from the map the darker it is more the response from the constituency or, or from the state so and also up being the biggest uh, state in india it constitutes 60% of uh, 16% of population and the 
major constituencies, like 80, 80 constituencies are there. So let's see for uh, Kerala and let's see for uh, Communist Party. So it seems like they have a very good high score, around 8.3 or, or, or odds. So, but there are only two actual respondents from this. So probably the people who voted for this are biased towards the uh, Marxist Communist uh, uh, Party. And uh, another thing which we want to find, uh, find like which state had the maximum parties in their constituencies. Seems like Mahara, Maharashtra had 10 constitu I mean, 10 parties ruling their constituencies on an overall scale, and it was followed by UP and other states. Let's see, like Bharatiya Janata Kachi. Obviously, they did not uh, have the luck to be have their presence in South India, as we all know. But uh, on the other hand, uh, Congress, they were present in the entire part of India. So these are uh, pretty much little uh, insights and uh, findings which we are able to come out. And these are all interactive dashboards and we also uh, leave it for the people to explore even more or answer questions which we may, uh, we may have uh, missed out. Actually, we did not focus on this to answer questions. We just want to see like how it is, what, what is this data telling. Yeah. So let's let's come on. Why did we use Power BI? And it, because it's a cloud-based service and it is easy to publish. And we had a very little time where we we want to use like customized tools. So that's the reason we went for Power BI. And one of the cons is like fairly new tool. So there are updates every other month. So you need to keep tra track of what's what has come up last month. So this is why we went for Power BI. We want to end this by saying like, if you torture long enough the data, it will definitely convince. I mean, confess, and we did it try to tell us something about it. And one disclaimer, we are not like affinity towards any party, state, or we don't have like anybody. <laughs> it is just the data that is talking. We are just a medium to convey it. Thank you. So, if you go, there was. If you go back a, a couple tabs, please. Right. So, so these metrics on the right side. Yeah. Um, they're very hard for. Uh, it's very hard for me to derive meaning from those numbers. Okay. So the maximum score that goes up is up to ten. So on a score of ten, what do they take up? And also one interesting thing which I might have missed out, like no no state or party has reached like eight cross, only few of them, and the respondents are very less. So we cannot directly infer like they're doing very good, as I showed an example. So, so a suggestion uh, that would make those, make those numbers more useful to a viewer is to, is to normalize the data, if you, if you understand what I mean by that. We, we consider average as, I mean, across every analysis, we consider an average, but the data set which we saw, it was already kind of normalized with the score. So average of average wouldn't make a sense. So we did not go for it. I actually want to test if you tortured this data long enough, yeah? <laughs> um, so if you were to, and I think there is enough dots here to connect, to roughly predict if an election were to be held right now on this data, who would win, right? Uh, or not who would win, which is the most popular party? Let's put it that way. Which is the highest scoring party? Let's say that's, you know, that gets that gets to rule the country. So, right. so you, got, you, got, you got scores against different parameters and you got politi political parties and you got states, right? So let's assume that the best performing party across consistently wins the election, not by voting, but, but just by these scores, right? What would be the, in your view, the top three or four predictor variables that you would choose to build such a model? So, uh, as we all, as I already mentioned, like rural place, I mean the rural part of India is the backbone of India. So, agricultural parameters might be very important. Go back, go back to your previous slide, the bottom left, yeah. Uh, okay, the top two, yeah. Yes. So, the agricultural parameters might be very important, and as we also saw, Shiv Sena were already performing very good, and they also went to win seven no, more that's seats. That's a single state party. Sorry. That's a single state party. Yeah. I mean, you are asking for across India, yeah, which party yeah, would Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so assuming, assuming, let's continue on the rural agricultural theme. Go on. 
So as we already saw here, uh, Swami Mani Bakshan and Shiv Sena have been really very good. So probably they would be like… By the way, I am also not for any political party, <laughs> yeah. just to clarify. Yeah. Yes. So I would pretty much believe they uh, to win and also with regards to Punjab, uh, as we saw like it's the most unhappy uh, state and eight, eight seats uh, was ruled by uh, I mean, uh, Congress and based on that I would expect Congress to lose and they lose, they lost five seats. So these are a uh, few, few parameters which we could consider for predicting. Just to add to what he just now said, we didn't consider predictive analytics in our No, research. no, I know you didn't. I know the purpose of this was different, but I'm, I'm just going back to your, it's, it's just a question to understand how well you've understood the data you worked on. That's all. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you to Team Kabaddi from Ford. So, so that brings us to the end of the 10 presentations for today. It's, uh, it's been fantastic just going by the responses that we've received for, for this tournament and also looking at the quality of presentations that we've seen today. Uh, we've, we've seen a range of um, reporting, we've seen a range of analysis um, and presenters have uh, come from a background of data science and data artistry, but also learned as they've gone along over the last couple of uh, days, weeks. And um, we've been humbled by just the effort that they've taken. And, and for us, I think the journey doesn't really end here. I think this is a, a beginning as well. But um, what, what we'd like to do out of this at the end of data artistry is to create a community right, of data artists, scientists, visualizers, and we talked about how this is the next generation business profession. And I think we, it's, it's important for us to leverage what we've seen here today and, uh, and make the most of it. Um, we're actually getting a note from the judges after they convene. So we'll, we'll take a quick break for tea. It's also a good time for the judges to convene and kind of collate and normalize scores. So we'll, we'll see you guys back here in about 20, 25 minutes, just after four. Uh, tea and snacks are being served on this floor in the breakout area. Uh, if the judges can go to the room at the back. So we'll see you back here just after four. Thank you. There are more ways to communicate with audiences than ever before. Multiple channels, plentiful data, and rapidly evolving tech. There are more ways to communicate with audiences than ever before. Multiple channels, plentiful data, and rapidly evolving technology that impacts current and future communications as they look to connect with brands they like. The choices you have for communications today are an important investment, but it's how they are optimized that makes them powerful. From creation to engagement, from your desktop to your audience's mailbox and the inbox, across the web and on mobile. Whatever the channel, message, size, or screen, we connect your brand to your audience with an entire spectrum of integrated services and technology. We help you create effective, integrated, interactive communications. Manage print and digital projects, assets, channels, and geographies. Deliver content to audiences in every way they interact with your brand. Optimize your multi-channel marketing and business communications. 
Communications that spark conversations, motivate customers, build brand loyalty, and grow profits. We are across the street and around the world. Our global capabilities allow us to work with you wherever you are. We create engaging, interactive experiences. We are on a mission to enable the future of innovative communications. We are R.R. Donnelly. Are you thinking of automating your business processes? RRD's service delivery automation solutions enable your business to automate high volume, repeatable tasks that previously required a human to perform, bringing in efficiency and productivity gains, reducing errors and securing uninterrupted coverage while lowering costs. Our three-pronged service delivery model has process transformation at its core and provides a full range of automation capabilities that include task bots, AI-based bots and real-time in-depth business analytics. Partnering with pioneers in the field of automation, RRD has built a center of excellence where a team of highly skilled professionals build complex bots that use advanced techniques like regular expression based on NLP techniques and supervised machine learning algorithms. The team has built bots for clients across industry verticals like finance and accounting, utilities, insurance and credit ratings, helping them optimize their operations and enabling standardization and consolidation. For every automation requirement, we employ a four-stage implementation timeline, discover, design, deploy and maintain. A fully integrated training, service, support and maintenance team ensures that the transformation is seamless and with minimal disruption to existing systems. At RRD, we are committed to delivering truly smart, highly scalable automation solutions tailored to your business needs. solutions tailored to your business needs. There are more ways to communicate with audiences than ever before. Multiple channels, plentiful data, and rapidly evolving technology that impacts current and future communications as they look to connect with brands they like. The choices you have for communications today are an important investment, but it's how they are optimized that makes them powerful. From creation to engagement, from your desktop to your audience's mailbox and the inbox, across the web and on mobile. Whatever the channel, message, size or screen, we connect your brand to your audience with an entire spectrum of integrated services and technology. We help you create effective, integrated, interactive communications. Manage print and digital projects, assets, channels and geographies. Deliver content to audiences in every way they interact with your brand. Optimize your multi-channel marketing and business communications. Communications that spark conversations, motivate customers, build brand loyalty, and grow profits. We are across the street and around the world. Our global capabilities allow us to work with you 
wherever you are. We create engaging, interactive experiences. We are on a mission to enable the future of innovative communications. We are R.R. Donnelly. Are you thinking of automating your business processes? RRD's service delivery automation solutions enable your business to automate high volume, repeatable tasks that previously required a human to perform, bringing in efficiency and productivity gains, reducing errors and securing uninterrupted coverage while lowering costs. Our three-pronged service delivery model has process transformation at its core and provides a full range of automation capabilities that include task bots, AI-based bots and real-time in-depth business analytics. Partnering with pioneers in the field of automation, RRD has built a center of excellence where a team of highly skilled professionals build complex bots that use advanced techniques like regular expression based on NLP techniques and supervised machine learning algorithms. The team has built bots for clients across industry verticals like finance and accounting, utilities, insurance and credit ratings, helping them optimize their operations and enabling standardization and consolidation. For every automation requirement, we employ a four-stage implementation timeline, discover, design, deploy and maintain. A fully integrated training, service, support and maintenance team ensures that the transformation is seamless and with minimal disruption to existing systems. At RRD, we are committed to delivering truly smart, highly scalable automation solutions tailored to your business needs. solutions tailored to your business needs. There are more ways to communicate with audiences than ever before. Multiple channels, plentiful data, and rapidly evolving technology that impacts current and future communications as they look to connect with brands they like. The choices you have for communications today are an important investment, but it's how they are optimized that makes them powerful. From creation to engagement, from your desktop to your audience's mailbox and the inbox, across the web and on mobile. Whatever the channel, message, size or screen, we connect your brand to your audience with an entire spectrum of integrated services and technology. We help you create effective, integrated, interactive communications. Manage print and digital projects, assets, channels, and geographies. Deliver content to audiences in every way they interact with your brand. Optimize your multi-channel marketing and business communications. Communications that spark conversations, motivate customers, build brand loyalty, and grow profits. We are across the street and around the world. Our global capabilities allow us to work with you wherever you are. We create engaging, interactive experiences. We are on a mission to enable the future of innovative communications. We are R.R. Donnelly.
Are you thinking of automating your business processes? RRD's service delivery automation solutions enable your business to automate high volume, repeatable tasks that previously required a human to perform, bringing in efficiency and productivity gains, reducing errors and securing uninterrupted coverage while lowering costs. Our three-pronged service delivery model has process transformation at its core and provides a full range of automation capabilities that include task bots, AI-based bots and real-time in-depth business analytics. Partnering with pioneers in the field of automation, RRD has built a center of excellence where a team of highly skilled professionals build complex bots that use advanced techniques like regular expression based on NLP techniques and supervised machine learning algorithms. The team has built bots for clients across industry verticals like finance and accounting, utilities, insurance and credit ratings, helping them optimize their operations and enabling standardization and consolidation. For every automation requirement, we employ a four-stage implementation timeline. Discover, design, deploy and maintain. A fully integrated training, service, support and maintenance team ensures that the transformation is seamless and with minimal disruption to existing systems. At RRD, we are committed to delivering truly smart, highly scalable automation solutions tailored to your business needs. Automation solutions tailored to your business needs. There are more ways to communicate with audiences than ever before. Multiple channels, plentiful data, and rapidly evolving technology that impacts current and future communications as they look to connect with brands they like. The choices you have for communications today are an important investment, but it's how they are optimized that makes them powerful. From creation to engagement, from your desktop to your audience's mailbox and the inbox, across the web and on mobile. Whatever the channel, message, size or screen, we connect your brand to your audience with an entire spectrum of integrated services and technology. We help you create effective, integrated, interactive communications. Manage print and digital projects, assets, channels and geographies. Deliver content to audiences in every way they interact with your brand. Optimize your multi-channel marketing and business communications. Communications that spark conversations, motivate customers, build brand loyalty, and grow profits. We are across the street and around the world. Our global capabilities allow us to work with you wherever you are. We create engaging, interactive experiences. We are on a mission to enable the future of innovative communications. We are R.R. Donnelly. Are you thinking of automating your business processes? RRD's service delivery automation solutions enable your business to automate high volume, repeatable tasks that previously required a human to perform, 
bringing in efficiency and productivity gains, reducing errors and securing uninterrupted coverage while lowering costs. Our three-pronged service delivery model has process transformation at its core and provides a full range of automation capabilities that include task bots, AI-based bots and real-time in-depth business analytics. Partnering with pioneers in the field of automation, RRD has built a center of excellence where a team of highly skilled professionals build complex bots that use advanced techniques like regular expression based on NLP techniques and supervised machine learning algorithms. The team has built bots for clients across industry verticals like finance and accounting, utilities, insurance and credit ratings, helping them optimize their operations and enabling standardization and consolidation. For every automation requirement, we employ a four-stage implementation timeline. Discover, design, deploy and maintain. A fully integrated training, service, support and maintenance team ensures that the transformation is seamless and with minimal disruption to existing systems. At RRD, we are committed to delivering truly smart, highly scalable automation solutions tailored to your business needs. solutions tailored to your business needs. There are more ways to communicate with audiences than ever before. Multiple channels, plentiful data, and rapidly evolving technology that impacts current and future communications as they look to connect with brands they like. The choices you have for communications today are an important investment, but it's how they are optimized that makes them powerful. From creation to engagement, from your desktop to your audience's mailbox and the inbox, across the web and on mobile. Whatever the channel, message, size or screen, we connect your brand to your audience with an entire spectrum of integrated services and technology. We help you create effective, integrated, interactive communications. Manage print and digital projects, assets, channels and geographies. Deliver content to audiences in every way they interact with your brand. Optimize your multi-channel marketing and business communications. Communications that spark conversations, motivate customers, build brand loyalty, and grow profits. We are across the street and around the world. Our global capabilities allow us to work with you wherever you are. We create engaging, interactive experiences. We are on a mission to enable the future of innovative communications. We are R.R. Donnelly. Are you thinking of automating your business processes? RRD's service delivery automation solutions enable your business to automate high volume, repeatable tasks that previously required a human to perform, bringing in efficiency and productivity gains, reducing errors and securing uninterrupted coverage while lowering costs. Our three-pronged service delivery model 
has process transformation at its core and provides a full range of automation capabilities that include task bots, AI-based bots, and real-time in-depth business analytics. Partnering with pioneers in the field of automation, RRD has built a center of excellence where a team of highly skilled professionals build complex bots that use advanced techniques like regular expression based on NLP techniques and supervised machine learning algorithms. The team has built bots for clients across industry verticals like finance and accounting, utilities, insurance and credit ratings, helping them optimize their operations and enabling standardization and consolidation. For every automation requirement, we employ a four-stage implementation timeline. Discover, design, deploy, and maintain. A fully integrated training, service, support, and maintenance team ensures that the transformation is seamless and with minimal disruption to existing systems. At RRD, we are committed to delivering truly smart, highly scalable automation solutions tailored to your business needs. solutions tailored to your business needs. There are more ways to communicate with audiences than ever before. Multiple channels, plentiful data, and rapidly evolving technology that impacts current and future communications as they look to connect with brands they like. The choices you have for communications today are an important investment, but it's how they are optimized that makes them powerful. From creation to engagement, from your desktop to your audience's mailbox and the inbox, across the web and on mobile. Whatever the channel, message, size, or screen, we connect your brand to your audience with an entire spectrum of integrated services and technology. We help you create effective, integrated, interactive communications. Manage print and digital projects, assets, channels, and geographies. Deliver content to audiences in every way they interact with your brand. Optimize your multi-channel marketing and business communications. Communications that spark conversations, motivate customers, build brand loyalty, and grow profits. We are across the street and around the world. Our global capabilities allow us to work with you wherever you are. We create engaging, interactive experiences. We are on a mission to enable the future of innovative communications. We are R.R. Donnelly. Are you thinking of automating your business processes? RRD's service delivery automation solutions enable your business to automate high volume, repeatable tasks that previously required a human to perform, bringing in efficiency and productivity gains, reducing errors and securing uninterrupted coverage while lowering costs. Our three-pronged service delivery model has process transformation at its core and provides a full range of automation capabilities that include task bots, AI-based bots, and real-time in-depth business analytics. Partnering with pioneers in the field of automation, 
RRD has built a centre of excellence where a team of highly skilled professionals build complex bots that use advanced techniques like regular expression based on NLP techniques and supervised machine learning algorithms. The team has built bots for clients across industry verticals like finance and accounting, utilities, insurance and credit ratings, helping them optimize their operations and enabling standardization and consolidation. For every automation requirement, we employ a four-stage implementation timeline. Discover, design, deploy and maintain. A fully integrated training, service, support and maintenance team ensures that the transformation is seamless and with minimal disruption to existing systems. At RRD, we are committed to delivering truly smart, highly scalable automation solutions tailored to your business needs. Automation solutions tailored to your business needs. There are more ways to communicate with audiences than ever before. Multiple channels, plentiful data, and rapidly evolving technology that impacts... For. Um, I thought it would be nice to, to hear from the judges on, on what they thought about overall the presentations that we've seen today, but also they've been involved with um, just the entries we've received from, from the participants. So overall general comments and also just specific mentions or comments that you want to make. Actually, if I can call you up, up on stage and talk. Hello, check, yeah, good. Um, so quickly, first of all, um, high quality presentations, high quality work in general, right? It's not very, um, very often that you come across um, rigor of analysis with brevity of presentation and quality of, uh, of thought expressed all coming together so well. So I think all teams scored very, very high on the fact that they knew what they were doing and they had understood the data very well, right? It's what they chose to do after that which kind of got manifested in what they prioritized, right? So that was one. So high quality stuff. And I think the way this whole thing has been organized, uh, the format, the problem set, the data set is very unique and innovative. Uh, so hats off to the organizers, first of all, more than anything else, because I think um, when you define, you know, the, the quality of game also has a lot to do, as some of the IPL guys, uh, participants said, the quality of game has a lot to do with um, you know, the, the playground itself. Uh, and, and I think the playground here played a very, very important role. The three data sets were very realistic. Uh, I think the right ones to bring out passion plus skills. Yeah? Um, so that's, that's, uh, that's uh, overall observation. Um, all the teams consistent, consistently demonstrated that they understood the underlying data. It was not just application of some horizontal skills of Tableau or Python or something else that was going in. I think the time spent in understanding it uh, clearly got manifested. Um, the last one I think is, uh, um, in general, I felt, and, and I'll uh, let my other two colleagues also comment out that, and this is, this is generally a, uh, a broader commentary on the industry and, and what works in this industry, in the data industry, analytics industry, is uh, it's not just about skills, it's about domain knowledge, right? Um, and I think where the domain knowledge, where the passion for cricket or politics or you know the, the national survey data on education, et cetera, where that was deep, where you focused more on that, you found that that led to probably uh, sharper questions in terms of what the teams wanted to present, uh, which in turn led to uh, clarity of thought in terms of saying, this is what we want to do with this visualization, right? Um, so that's, that's my, uh, but I enjoyed, I, I mean, I've, you know, mentally made tons of notes. All 10 teams, fantastic high quality work. If, 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 if I were allowed, I would give first prize to all 10.
So I think uh, I also echo uh, Arun's uh, thoughts in terms of the quality of presentation that we had. Uh, the, all the 10 were uh, really high quality presentations. Uh, and in terms of what has been brought, brought forward, the understanding of the data, the skill in the usage of the tools and the appropriate selection of the visuals to convey the story. I think that's something that stood out in all the teams that presented. So they had a storyline, they had an understanding of the data, and then the usage of tools did come out really well. So I think those are two key points that were there, and I think uh, uh, congratulations and uh, uh, to all the winners as well as the participants. I think it's, uh, it's a game where there can be only a few winners, but uh, I think participation did really make a difference, and it was all high-quality stuff that we saw. Thanks. So, so um, a few observations. One is I, I really enjoyed the presentations. I, I know I learned a lot. Uh, it was it was interesting that the creative ways people approach the data, and and I realized what a hard uh, assignment this was because uh, the tournament actually didn't tell you what to do. It was like we just threw a data set at you, or like hey, you know, play with this. So some people did descriptive analytics, some people did re reports, some people did analysis. Uh, so you, we, we were all kind of having several different types of conversations simultaneously. So there was a lot of, you, it, it wasn't just data artistry, you really had to conceptualize what kind of response you wanted to make all together. So that, that was a real, uh, and, and I, I appreciate that because I think, I think we really tasked people with some deep, th deep thinking. Um, and, uh, and, and, and I just want to know that we're, we're I, this, this is really a very monumental event. I kind of feel like we're at the kickoff of a brand new profession. Uh, and, and it's going to be interesting to see how this tournament evolves over the years. So, uh, uh, so yeah, just, just and, I, and, and lastly, a very important thing is for all the, all the participants, whether you win a prize or not, I hope you all continue to polish these and use these because I think um, just with a little bit more shine, uh, all of them actually would be of interest to other people. And, and in, the new, in, the, in this new world, you know, it used to be people used to look for a job with just a resume, but nowadays people actually want to see what you can do. So this is actually a great tactical resume for you to show off what you're capable of doing. And, and uh, all of them are worth pride, with, with no doubt. So thank you. Check. Thank you, Antak, Ravi, and, and Seth. I'd like to call upon our, uh, our Vice President and Head Human Resources and Communications, Meena Sinha, to come up and present a memento to each of our judges, please. And Antak, if you'd like to come up and collect a memento from us. Thank you so much. And Ravi. Thank you, Mina. All of the participants who submitted entries were assigned mentors through this process. And the role of the mentors was were to guide the participants, help them through the data set, and also be available for, for queries and, and clarifications when, as, as and when they had, uh, and kind of assist them through the journey. So we'd like to just recognize our mentors and, and call them up on stage. 
Uh, I'd like to request if uh, Venkatesh, our Vice President Finance, can come up and, and hand out the first set of mementos. Asta Bhatia, are you here? Asta? Banu Kishore. And Baskar ready? Thank you, Vivi. I'd like to call upon our Vice President IT, Prakash, to hand over the next uh, few mementos. The mentors assigned were from both Graminer as well as RRD. Vamsi Yuvraj. Vishwas Parameshaya. And finally, Sampat Kumar. Thank you, Prakash. All right, so here we go. So the, the judges have come up with um, with three prizes, right? There's a first, second, and third, but also two special mentions that, that they felt strongly deserve to be called out today. So I'd like to invite um, Sampath Kumar, who's here, who's the regional head. Sen Sendil Kumar, sorry. Who's the regional head for NASCOM. Where's Sendil? To hand over the two um, <laughs> special mention awards. And this is, in, this is in no particular order. The first one, goes to Team Iceberg, Prashant Datta, Aromal Ram and Rajshri Deshmukh from the National Institute of Design. Thank you. The, spe the second special mention award goes to Team Drishti from Manipal Prolon, Archana Saumya. Thank you, Sadal. Kiran, may I have you up on stage, please? Okay. The third place goes to data wizards from the Hindu, Varun Krishna and Vignesh Radhakrishnan and Srinivasan.
Thank you. Congrats to the team from the Hindu. Second place goes to Kabaddi from the Ford Motor Company, Kritika Durga and Tanish Pasha. Congratulations, Team Ford. First place and the winner for the Data Artistry 2018 tournament is the team One Globe Technocrafts from One Globe Systems, Raghunath, Damu, and Ranjit. Congrats, guys. All right. I'd like to call over the participants, um, the other finalists over here today. Um, Team Analytic Insights. Can I have Vishnu, Siddharth, and Mugesh to come on stage? We have a small gift for you as well. Can you guys stay on stage? Yeah. All right. Um, Rahul, Stacked Pi Bar from uh, Positive Integers. Ravindra Rathor from Vernacular, Time Constraint. And finally, Nishant Minj from Zias, National Institute of Design. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Kiran.
I'd now like to hand over to Amardeep Devadasan, Senior Vice President Operations, for final vote of thanks. All right. <clears throat> First of all, congratulations, winners. Let's hear it for the winners once again, people. I'd like to start by uh, thanking all the participants, especially the finalists here today. In uh, uh, Make note of this, the inaugural edition of the Data Artistry Tournament, it is not going to stop here. So congratulations, thank you once again. Um, there are so many moving parts uh, when it comes to putting together an ev uh, event of this scale. So a special note of gratitude goes out to our partners from Gramina and NASCOM, thank you so much. Our judges, N.T. Arun Kumar, Seth Appel, and Ravindranath Japanyanam, for giving generously of their time and being engaged and so interactive in the course of this event. So uh, thank you very much, judges. We wanted this event to be um, as much about learning as about it a comp being a competition. And the people who made that possible were the mentors. Every participant, uh, we had 173 of them, had a mentor assigned. And these mentors, uh, we believe, made all the difference. And uh, I'd like to call them out by name, because without you, that I, I believe the quality of the presentation would not have been as good it was, as it was today. So in no particular order, Asta Bhatia, Arul Vail Kumar, Arun Santanam, <laughs> A.V. Bhaskar Reddy, Bhanu K, uh, Nisha Sulya, Sandeep Reddy, Vamsi Sugala, Sampath Kumar, Sendil Muniapan, and our very own Vishwas. Once again, a big round of applause for the mentors. Thank you, mentors. <laughs> On the subject of mentors, uh, I must say that I have an extra special uh, shout out for three people. Sandeep Reddy from Gramna, who's not here today, he was brilliant throughout, helping us get the whole place toge thing together. And uh, Sendil and Sampath from RRD, uh, you guys really went above and beyond and helped to you know, connect those dots to bring the, bring the entire piece together. Uh, a special shout out to our newly minted uh, internet TV stars in the form of Manoj Paul and Vishwas. <laughs> Their uh, data jugalbandi. Uh, will, has revealed a side to them that I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of on internet television. Thank you, Manoj. Thank you, Vishwas. <laughs> all artwork, all collateral was designed in-house, and um, this is an extra large round of applause, I believe, that is due to Manoj and Faisal. Manoj and Faisal, thank you, guys. We saw a lot of video, right, during the course of this tournament. What did you think about the quality of the video? Outstanding, Outstanding good. I think, so uh, I'd like to call out, and they're standing right at the back. Raise your hands, Benji, Ashna, and Vinay. <laughs> we can't thank Santosh enough for sticking to brand guidelines, being brand compliant. He designed all the trophies, and he ensured that the swag has swagger. Thank you, Santosh. <laughs> Murugan and Soumya, they designed the microsite, and I think the microsite set the tone for the, whole, for the whole tournament. It was an exceptionally designed, a brilliantly executed microsite. I know they're not here today, but thank you. Oh, there he is. Hey, Murugan. <laughs> Thank you, Morgan. Thank you. You, you. you set the bar and then you kept raising it for the whole event. Thank you. Um, there's no way we could have pulled this off without the constant help and support from our IT team. And I'm going to read out in no particular order. I'm, I'm not sure who's here today. Satish, Somi, Mahadoom, Sangeeta, Godanda for giving IT ground support. You guys were incredibly outstanding. Thank you. A shout out to IT Governance, Karthik Shankar, and IT Infra, Venkatesh Siyar. Thank you so much. <laughs> Shweta, Deepak, and Tyagarajan, they hosted the microsite, set up the logins, and of course, uh, my friend Prakash Virmani, for being open to crazy ideas that were floated at 10 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
in a special, and, I'm, and I really wish they were here today, uh, I, I can't, I, I think it will be remiss for me to not mention how important the procurement team was in this process. We were procuring stuff and software and hardware that's way out of the normal approved list and these people made it happen. A very special thank you to Shiva, Ramsi and Rajita from the procurement team. Thank you, Vivi. <laughs> On the admin side, Ramesh, Girish, Vishnupriya, Manoj and Nanda. <laughs> you guys are bona fide rock stars who worked through the night to make sure we were all ready for showtime. The security team, Captain Manish and Dayalan, we got the security controls, clearances in place, we're all compliant, it is brilliant. Um, he's not here right now because he's out doing something for the event, but I'd like us all to just for a minute, when he comes back, we'll do it again. Thank the hero of the hour, and that's Lawrence. Lawrence keeps elevating. Lawrence keeps elevating his event management skills with each event he puts up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I think we're going to have to make you into a business unit. Uh, the communication team, thank you so much. Uh, led by Christina and supported by Romy Sudhakar and Deepti. Thank you. Where are you guys? Okay, I think we should give them a shout out. Where are they? There you are. Okay, thank you. Manu and Rohit for being available to brainstorm and challenge every hypothesis and put it in its place more than once. Manu and Rohit, thank you. <laughs> Jerry, Joseph and Lakshmipati, where are you guys? Thank you so much. You stepped in at the last minute. You, you just helped us bring it all together. The event management skills you practiced as a result of reach were used for a, for a very, very good cause today. Thank you. Uh, a special group of people, uh, I think, they, they sort of provided the, the, the engine room to move this uh, agenda forward. And I'd like to call them up on stage, and that's our management training group, starting with Kirtana, Kirtana, Shubrata, Madhav, Sumit. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Our MC for the day was in rare form, I think. And we should be deeply appreciative and thankful to Sunil Kumar, for, uh, Sunil Shankar, for spending the time with us and not playing golf on a Saturday. Sunil, thank you. I'd like to thank Arvind Divakar and their team for making the live streaming possible. The videography throughout this tournament has been truly world class. Thank you, Arvind Divakar and the team. I'd like to thank our friends at Graphic Stills for the photography. I know it's going to be brilliant. Thank you, Graphic Stills. Um, thank you, new pro audio visuals for the sound and the live backdrop that everyone wants to leave here permanently, which is not going to be allowed. <laughs> and then, was that? Yes, it should be allowed. <laughs> it should be allowed? All right, don't ask me about that. <laughs> Lawrence! Okay, round of applause, Lawrence. The, the one-man business unit. <laughs> okay, I'd like to call upon the Chief Technology Officer for this event, Manas Jain. <laughs> Manas with his unique, his unique, inimitable style of technology management is the guy who's kept it all together, brought it together, he's worked day and night, and he's had a shave, so we should give him a round of applause. <laughs> And then last but not the least, I'm, not, I'm going to say these two names together because it's very hard to tell who did what. And that is um, the true architects of this program, the people who picked it up and brought it to where it is. Once again, from the management training team, Nitesh Wag and Akhila Rao. All right, once again, thank you everyone, everyone for giving us of your time on a Saturday. This is just the first edition. There will be more. So watch this space. More to come. Thank you very much. Enjoy your weekend. Okay, so Amar has been so humble.
reading out all the names but the person who truly deserves this this was a thought which came to us in the board room and he is the man who made it possible so can i request everyone to get up and give amar a standing ovation Hey folks the photo booth is still open I'd thank you please take pictures this is a one time only offer and post it on the event page there's also feedback forms available outside I'd request if uh, all guests and visitors can fill them in and drop them off can we have all the finalists up on stage please for a group photograph all all the finalists the winners everyone on stage please thank you